In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how you can make great signs using your CNC machine. So the first step is to get a design of your sign. You can either do this by getting one from online or making it in Vectric or a third party program like Photoshop. Next, you need to create your project in vCarve. Make sure that you select a surface touch off for this and then just put in the material dimensions of whatever it is that you're making your sign out of. Next, bring in your design either by importing the bitmap if it's a JPEG image or an SVG file if it's already in vector format. If it's a JPEG, you're going to have to trace the bitmap to convert it to vectors. For that, you just use the trace bitmap function. And if you're unfamiliar with this, we have this great tutorial on our YouTube that goes over it more in depth. And I'll put a link to that in the description. Once it's converted into vectors, select your design and create a V-carve toolpath. Add a clearance tool of an end mill of your choice. For this one, I did a quarter inch, but I probably should have done an eighth inch, and it probably would have saved me more time in the long run. Even though eighth inch would have taken longer than a quarter inch, it would have gotten more material out of the way that the V-bit didn't later have to go in and hog out itself. Once you have your clearance tool set, you can select a V-bit of your choice. It depends on what you have on hand, but I recommend using a narrower angled V-bit just because you can get finer detail with a narrower angle. After everything's set, press calculate and then preview your design. If the toolpath carving is inverse of what you wanted to carve, create a boundary using the offset vectors function of your outermost line and make sure that it's selected when you're calculating the toolpath. I'm also using this offset to cut out the design from the stock material at the end of the project. Sometimes the boundaries of thin lines are so shallow that they don't appear on the preview. This mainly happens when you trace a bitmap. Sometimes, even if they're not showing up in the preview, they can appear on the project when you're carving, but if you don't want to risk it, you can try this trick. Using the draw line tool, trace over the areas that aren't being registered by the preview. In my case, it was all the lines on the cabin. Once you have all those lines, you can select the ones of equal width and create a profile toolpath for those. Keep in mind that the depth of cut is correlative to the width of the lines with V-bits. For thinner lines, set a shallower cut depth. I did 0.04 inches and a deeper depth will give you thicker lines. I did 0.06 for some of the border and accent lines. You can check in your preview if the width is correct. If not, just adjust the cut depth until you have it the width that you want it to be. Once the V-carve portion is all set, make your profile cutout by selecting the outside border vector and creating a profile toolpath. Set your cut depth to equal the defined Z height of your material. Make sure that you select outside right for your machine vectors and make sure to add tabs so your project doesn't move once it's cut out. The last thing I recommend doing is to add a surfacing pass of 0.01 inches within the border of your project. If you're working with perfectly planed and level material, this may not be necessary, but this step will ensure that the surface being carved is perfectly leveled to the spindle. That way there won't be any differences in height that could affect the width of your carve. From there, all that's left to do is to get your material set up on your machine and let it run. One tip that's important for accurate consistency is to maintain a constant reference point of your Z touch off for each bit. So just make sure that you're putting your probe in the same area each time you touch off the next bit. Especially keep that in mind after you run the surfacing pass. You have to touch off on the surface part of your material since that's your new material surface. Also, if you want excellent contrast in your carving and to save you a lot of time and effort after the fact, the best thing to do is to stain or paint your surface before running any of your carving toolpaths. This will create sharp lines with great detail and you're letting the machine do it all for you. Just make sure that you do this after the surfacing pass and not beforehand. And I also recommend sanding your surface to finish before putting the stain on because you won't be able to after the fact. Once the machine is finished, take it off, cut off the tabs, clean up with some sanding, and apply the finish of your choice. I use polyacrylic for this just to make it a bit durable and to give it a nice finished look. And just like that, you have a great custom sign to hang wherever you'd like. So we hope that this tutorial was helpful. You can always check out the other ones we have on our YouTube channel for more tips on your CNC and your design software. And as always, thank you for watching.